Action like that, a lot of times, is gonna come with a really high price tag. I mean, come on, Theorem Forge Mordex, 250. Hey, let's not forget about the Anthem from Benchmade, 425. But what if I told you it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg? No, today I'm gonna show you my top 10 list of some of the cheapest budget fidget knives out there. Every knife that I'm gonna show you today not only has great action, but each one is gonna cost you, get this, around $50 or less. Some of these I have never shown before on my channel. Hey, how you doing? If this is your first time here, my name is Jay. Welcome to the channel. Go ahead and consider clicking on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews. They get right to the point. Every knife that I show you here today, I will be sure to go ahead and put a link down below just in case, like if you see something and you wanna pick it up for yourself. All right, let's get started with number 10. I've got the induction from Kershaw. Unfortunately though, this, this standout from Kershaw has been recently discontinued. One of my favorite features though is the fact that this knife can be completely operated without ever having to put your fingers in the path of the blade. Now the hawk lock is what makes that possible, just using the, uh, the slider here on the show side. The malocking mechanism was actually designed by GNG Hawk the very same people that are responsible for the strong lock system on the Buck Marksman. It's nearly impossible for me to fail the deployment because notice how the, look at the flipper tab, you see where it is in relation to the, the pivot screw. It's well above it. And speaking of that flipper tab, now notice when the blade is open, it's, it's totally hidden. That's just a feature you really do not see very often nowadays. Unfortunately, there is a couple things that I, that I don't like. Now, that hot clock, it's only accessible from the show side. So not really the most, uh, not the most lefty of uh, friendly locks. These aluminum scales, they, they are a little, bit, a little bit slick. And if you're the type of person that actually like bases the, the price of a knife on the type of blade steel it has, you're going to consider this to be kind of expensive at $38. I mean, you're just looking at HCR 13 MOV. At number nine, I've got from Harms, this is the Giant Silkworm. And this is one of their newer designs, and I honestly think they did a really good job on it. This G10 handle really does feel great. There's no sharp edges on it anywhere, and you can see how, yeah, it definitely fills out like my medium sized hand, their version of the axis lock really does work well. And these Omega springs, they really, they really feel a lot stronger than like what I'm used to with, you know, like with Benchmade, manipulating the lock is really easy. This one, there's just like a little bit of resistance and I kind of like that. And here's another one is, this is a true ambidextrous knife you know, looking at the, the thumb studs on both sides, the lock, and we get, yep, a two position deep carry pocket clip. Overall though, the quality of this construction, it honestly, it feels like it should cost way more than the $38 that they're asking. The only thing that I don't like is, you know, and, and this is just personal preference, I'm not the biggest fan of like these upswept kind of like uh, trailing points, but Everything else on this knife is just so well done. I mean, it absolutely deserves to be acknowledged. Number eight, I've got from CJRB. This is the Rampart. This flipper tab and, well, really, the, the action as well, reminds me of a Spyderco knife, the Smock, which, hey, that's a good thing. I really like this, this blade shape and the, check out that really, uh, like, decent sized forward finger choil. I mean, if you ever have to like open this like discreetly, like you're at work or something with it, you can do it, you can like thumb roll it open because of how much room there is on that blade. And with a handle length, you're looking at about uh, 4.75 inches. I think that the handle 
is just about maybe uh, like a quarter inch longer than it needs to be. It just makes it take up a lot more room like lengthwise in the pocket. I am really excited to show you this one from Sanren Mu. This is the SRM 9201. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it has one of the best looking clip point blades I've seen in a long time. Let me show you why that is. Typically, okay, you can see like, you know, clip points are not usually very broad, but Sanren Mu's version is, and I like that a lot. And the action, let's see, can it be, can I spidey flick it? Oh, you better believe you can. And then, yeah, this is uh, their version of Benchmade's Axis Lock, which they did a really nice job on. Works very well. I mean, you can open and close the blade just using the lock. And we do get a, a really nice, uh, a pretty deep carried uh, clip, which you can see for righties. And it is switchable for lefties, so we get the lefty love. And you know what that means. Makes this a truly ambidextrous knife. Just a couple of minor problems that I have with this knife. The first one being the, well, the studs for that, for that lock. You can see they don't really come out very, they're very far. So they're kind of, they're kind of short. I just wish that maybe they were a little bit, just a little bit longer. And the handle, the handle kind of feels unfinished in places like just some of the edges could have been rounded a little better number six now this is definitely not not a new knife but it's new to the channel from tuya this is the bruiser it's just an older very popular budget knife that has been around for quite a while now the flipper tan positioning here is a big reason why the action's so good on this one you can see it's not too far above that pivot screw but it is a little bit higher. Very, very difficult for me to get this to fail. Let's check the, oh my. Now this is a big knife, okay, with a 3.6 inch uh, D2 blade, which is fine, but the handle now you're looking at, that's gonna be like five inches of G10 in your pocket. And that's, so that's a lot taking up some room. And finally, the forward, notice this uh, forward finger choil, if that's in fact what it's meant to be. It's kind of, it's kind of shallow. So it really makes me nervous to, uh, to choke up on it. It just, it seems like it would be pretty easy for me to slip forward. Number five, I got a big boy. Yep, this is from Best Tech. It's the Swordfish. Since it's not like the most, you know, practical, EDCs out there. I mean, you're looking at that's, yeah, that's a four inch blade. It's a little bit bigger than what I like to, to carry every day, but there is just no denying the fact it has some amazing, huh, really addictive action. So, hey, as a, you know, as a pocket sword, there's absolutely none better. My only dislike here really it just has to do with uh, the overall size. I mean, otherwise, this is a great knife. Number four, I've got the, this is the Blackwash version of the Rake P801. An excellent action here. I mean, whether you use that, the flipper tab, or you can go ahead and of course use the, the ambidextrous. Thumb studs, very solid. You got a very solid uh, frame lock with all steel construction. So, you know, that 4.2 uh, ounce weight, it's definitely understandable. We get really good uh, budget blade steel in the 14C28N, and it's a very slim build. So it's gonna take up just a little bit of room in the pocket. And it's also, this is, it's one of the easier knives to, I think, to disassemble. I got just a couple uh, minor dislikes here. Uh, the first one is going to be, well, those, those thumb studs. Yeah, those are, those are really small. So they're going to be kind of maybe a little more difficult to use. Like if you're wearing, wearing gloves, no lefty love 
with the pocket clip. I mean, I know, hey, it makes that show side look really good, but still, for us lefties, you know, that's nice. It's nice to have. And unfortunately, since it's all stainless steel construction, you know, the traction is just not going to be like the best here, especially like in the colder winter months. I mean, your hand's going to just kind of slide around. All right, number three, I got a knife. This is definitely no stranger to this channel. It is the Ganzo Firebird F760. And here we have Ganzo's uh, version of the Axis Lock, also known as, well, they call it the, the G-Lock. Very, very well done. I mean, the, the action in both directions is probably one of the best out of all the knives on this list. And at about $25, it is one of the least expensive knives on this list. It's so frustratingly close to being a true ambidextrous knife because we've got the lock, okay, check. The thumb studs, check. Pocket clip, no, no lefty love. It, it looks like it, but it is not. You can't switch it to the other side. Really my only issue here, I mean, other than the uh, other than the pocket clip uh, is going to be well the the softer screws especially like with the older ganzo models i mean it's they're really easy if you need to like disassemble it really easy to uh, to strip those all right number two from civivi i've got one of the this is one of their newer releases the dogma and really i like just about just about everything uh, about this knife I just love this uh, clip point blade shape. Look at that with that hollow grind. Great slicer. Very similar to a to another Civivi, the Rustic Gent. Here's another where they really did pay attention to the the size of that flipper tab. So you, they kept it. They kept the size down. So look at that, making contact right about the uh, the halfway point. Nice job. We get great action here too. You can either go ahead and use that flipper tab, which works really well, or let's see, can I do it? With the thumb hole, oh, that spidey flick, really easy. You're looking at a great blade to handle ratio because this is a three and a half inch blade, which they were able to fit into a four and a quarter inch handle. And you know Civivi's gonna take care of us with that standard deep carry clip, which you can see tip up for righties. Whew. Yep, and for lefties, we do get the lefty love. Now this is gonna be, this is the copper one, which is gonna weigh quite a bit more and it even costs a little bit more, but, but the G10, you can have that for like around $47. The only thing that I can, uh, that I can pick at with this is gonna be, well, the size of the thumb hole. I just kind of wish it was a little bit bigger uh, to make it a little easier for me to like do the standard kind of like, you know, thumb flick open. All right, you ready to see? My number one, absolute number one favorite budget fidget knife. Yes, sir, we get the honey badger. Now this is the medium sized in D2 steel, so it is one of the most expensive knives on this list. Uh, it comes in like at about $54. But they do take care of us because if you need something that costs less, you can get, there's a HCR 13 MOV blade, which comes in a little bit less at like $35. Something you gotta really be aware of though, with the, the HCR blades in relation to the D2, the HCR blades actually have a really nice, generous forward finger choil, which you can see here on this D2 one uh, that they, unfortunately, they, uh, they took that away. But you got a couple different uh, methods of deployment. Oh my, the bearings on this thing. You get the, the flipper tab, works great, my favorite. Or let's see about that spidey flick, oh my. Now, one thing that they do, I really wish other uh, manufacturers would, would jump on board, is that for just about all of their knives, they come in three different sizes. Yeah, you can get it in either like the small, medium, or large. How cool is that? And the only real issue that I have with this knife 
is regarding the FRN, the FRN handle scales. They just feel, you know, to me at least, they feel kind of, kind of cheap. All right, now it's your turn. Hey, I've shown you mine. Let's see yours down in the comments section. Go ahead and list out like what are some of your favorite uh, budget fidget knives. You know, they don't have to be budget, just maybe some of your favorite fidget knives. If you don't have 10, just put as many as you possibly can, but put them down in the uh, comment section. All right, now up on the screen, you're going to see two videos, okay? One of which is going to be that YouTube is going to recommending of mine that you should watch next. Now, the other is going to be a, a link to my playlist, which you click on that. It'll show you like all of my videos about other fidget knives. And if you enjoyed this video and you got like, I mean, any value from it, would you let me know that by just leaving one of those and don't forget to click on subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. You guys take care. See you later.